This is part two of the myth of the Watcher Angels. The story that you are hearing has been compiled from a variety of sources of Anakic literature. The base of the Watcher's tale is primarily drawn from Charles's translation of Ethiopic Enoch, as well as from the Nicholsburg Vanderkam translation, integrating primarily the fragments found in Qumran. Additional information is drawn from the Chronicles of Jeremiel as well as Ginsberg's Legends of the Jews. This is not a direct translation of the Book of Enoch, but rather a dramatic, poetic retelling of the Watcher's tale. Second part. And there was among men the scribe Enoch, seventh from Adam, and he was a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God. And Enoch walked among the holy ones, and was carried to the high heavens. And before the judgment of the watchers, Enoch was hidden, and no one among the children of men knew where he had gone. But his activities had to do with the watchers, and his days were spent with the holy ones in heaven. And once the judgment had been passed, Enoch was called before the majesty of heaven. And he was told, Enoch! Righteous scribe, go to the watchers who forsook their eternal station in the highest heaven, and say, You will have neither peace nor forgiveness. And concerning their sons, the mighty heroes in whom they rejoice, say also that they will see the slaughter of their beloved ones. They will lament over the destruction of their sons, and they will petition heaven on their behalf, but they will receive no mercy. And Enoch was told, Find Azazel and go to him. Tell him a great sentence has been passed to bind you. And because of the forbidden things you have revealed to mankind and the destruction which these have wrought, you will receive neither relief nor mercy. And Enoch went forth and spoke to all the watchers together, and he told them of the judgment and of Azazel's sentence. And as they listened to him, great fear and trembling seized them. They did not wish to see their works on earth pass away. They did not wish to witness the destruction of their mighty sons. But judgment had been passed, and heaven would hear no petition from them. And so they petitioned the scribe Enoch, so that he might go forth to heaven and speak on their behalf. Then Enoch wrote out the petition of the watchers, their deeds individually, and their request for forgiveness and length of days. And Enoch went and sat down by the waters of Dan to the southwest of Hermon, and he read the petition until he fell asleep. And Enoch dreamed, and a vision fell over him, and in the dream vision clouds beckoned to Enoch, and a mist came, lightnings and stars sped and hastened his transit. And then the winds lifted him upward and bore him flying to heaven. And in heaven Enoch saw a wall built of crystal and surrounded by tongues of flame. When he passed through the fire, Enoch beheld a great mansion. It was built all of crystal. Its ceiling was like the path of the stars, clear as water. And between the lightnings and the stars were fiery cherubim. The walls and all the portals blazed with fire, and Enoch was afraid. Great trembling seized him. His limbs grew weak, and he fell upon his face. For a moment he could not move on. Then a door opened to him, and Enoch beheld a second house, greater than the first. And this one was built entirely of tongues of flame. The splendor and majesty of the place surpassed anything Enoch had ever seen and he found himself at a loss for words. And the ceiling here was fire and lightning flashes, and further on there was a great throne. And it seemed the throne was made of ice, with wheels like the sun, with wheels like the shining sun. And there was a great sound of cherubim, and rivers of fire issued forth from beneath the throne. And the great glory of the generations was seated upon the throne, clothed in raiment so bright Enoch could not see. And around him were multitudes, 
holy ones who never left their appointed posts, day or night. And even the angels could not look upon the face of the majesty for its splendor and glory. Enoch, prostrate and trembling, lay on his face before the Lord. And then the Lord called to Enoch and said, Come to me, Enoch, and hear my words. And one of the holy angels approached Enoch and raised him up. And he was conveyed to the throne, and he stood before the majesty with his head bowed and his eyes cast down. And the Lord addressed him again and said, Fear not, Enoch, for you are a righteous man and a scribe of truth. You have come here to petition for the watchers, but you must go to them and say, You should petition on the behalf of humans, and not humans on the behalf of you. For me you will ask them, Why have you forsaken the high heaven, your eternal sanctuary, to take wives and do as the sons of earth do? Why have you lain with women and begotten giants? You were holy ones and spirits living forever, yet you have acted as flesh and blood that die and pass away. The sons of earth are fated to perish, and therefore I have given them women, so that they might beget children, and nothing would be wanting on earth. But you were spirits, living forever, and you had no need of wives or children among you. The spirits of heaven are meant to have heaven as their dwelling place. But these giants begotten of both the spirit and the flesh, they have no place in heaven. Their dwelling will be on earth, for they have come from the earth. And when the spirits go forth from the flesh of their bodies, they will become evil spirits on earth. And the spirits of the giants will afflict, do violence, make desolate, attack, and wrestle and wreak destruction upon the earth. They will take no food, but nevertheless will they hunger and thirst and smite the living. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men, because they have proceeded from them. And then say to the watchers who sent you to petition on their behalf, Judgment has been consummated against you. From now on you will not ascend into heaven, nor will heaven hear your pleas and you will be bound to the earth, and you cannot leave. And because, and before this judgment is carried out, you will see the destruction of everything you love. As you watch, your mighty sons will slay one another and fall by the sword. No petition will be heard on your behalf. You will have no peace. And Enoch was sent forth to reprimand the watchers. But before that time he was carried by the holy ones through the seven heavens. And to him was revealed the mystery of the heavens, the courses of the luminaries, and the mansions of the moon. And he was given visions of the judgment and the world that was to come, so that he might return to his people and instruct them in these things. And the watchers had no peace, for no petition would be heard on their behalf or on the behalf of their sons. And their sons made war and slew one another until all of them fell by the sword. And when it came time for the works of the watchers to be washed away in the flood, Enoch was called once more to the high heavens so he would not perish. And the Lord of ages placed Enoch among the holy ones, where he took up the station of the Metatron, the righteous scribe of heaven. And the watchers remained bound to the earth they desired, and the spirits of their children linger still, because the final day of judgment has yet to be consummated. This concludes the material we have on the watchers and their story.